there, friends. God bless you. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim with another show of our series, The Breaker 2.0. Yes, this is our second series on The Breaker. Here, we want to see The Breaker anointing manifest in every area of your life, financially, relationally, spiritually, truly this year and beyond. There's going to be great, great breakthrough. Now, today, my guest on the show, my gosh, Apostle, Prophet, Tracy Allen Cook, this man of God, he is a major prophet in the United States, a miracle worker. And truly today, we're going to get into some things. We're going to talk about breakthrough in divine knowledge, breakthrough in divine knowledge. So ping your friends, share this broadcast, and get ready to take some notes. Apostle Tracy Allen Cook, God bless you, man. I got a welcome to God the show. Bless you. God bless you. We're so, so good to be with you. Yeah, we're so excited to have you, man. God, God bless you. This is going to be an exciting show. Yes, sir. Well, we're going to talk about breakthrough in divine knowledge. Breakthrough in divine knowledge. Now, of course, there's earthly carnal wisdom knowledge, as even Apostle James talks about, versus heavenly spiritual knowledge and wisdom. We understand that. Knowledge is one of the seven spirits of God, according to Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. Uh, how important is it for us today, Apostle, to move in divine knowledge and not humanistic knowledge or wisdom? Well, the, the knowledge of God, it, it defines every factor, every faucet of life. God's, it's one thing that, you know, all our eschatology, our theology, um, even all our studies, uh, nothing's wrong with that because you need that as well. You always need to have the knowledge of the background history. But we talk about the supernatural knowledge. It defines all odds. It doesn't matter what the impossible is. It's made possible because of that knowledge that God allows you to possess. And when you move into, especially the gifts of the words of knowledge, or you move into uh, the realms where those gifts become so extraordinary because they are supernatural gifts given by us, by God to us as individuals. We possess such the inheritance of God. When we talk about his knowledge, we're talking, on, we're talking about the very existence of who he is. Everything is centered around the fact that his existence is wrapped in such knowledge that cannot scientifically, they, you know, it's far beyond that. It's a knowledge that many people, uh, they, they marvel and they stand back and say, how is this so possible? Because it's so profound. It's beyond our humanistic thinking, our education, whatever it may be, or our theology. It possesses a, such a supernatural strength ability that goes way beyond. It's like uh, tapping into the cosmos and uh, you've seen everything around it, and you can, how in the world did all of this come to shape and form? Well, by his word. And that knowledge is that word that we stand, we present ourselves with. Wow. Well, you know, Apostle, of course, there's many people who say the written word is all we need. Of course, the Bible, right? Basic instruction before leaving earth. The Bible, the word of God, the written logos is infallible, can never be replaced. It's God's word. However, right. what's the difference? Is there a difference with the written word and supernatural knowledge? Well, the, the, the written word itself, the, the letter killeth, the spirit of God bringeth the lines. Mm. So um, you have a lot of um, agnostics that read the Bible, you know, a lot of atheists I've, I've come across, you know, and um mm. What people don't realize, a lot of atheists, they, they really spend time studying the Bible like another book. Uh, they'll dissect it into scriptures, but they never experience a life encounter until the Holy Spirit began to transform their lives or bring them to a place of conviction. So the written word itself is, is our foundation as Christians. The fundamental Christianity is the word of God. It's our foundation. The difference is when you start tapping into the realms of the spirit, when you have the encounter with the third person of the Trinity, that word is like every time you read the word from the page, it leaps off the pages or you put yourself as an individual right into the pages. Like 
even though you're not the author of it, you become just a king to the author because you understand everything that that individual's life struggles or success they're going through. It's like you put yourself in every book of the Bible. And you can analyze and see it through their eyes. It's like you're standing right beside them, you know. So that's that's the difference between just a written word. Anybody can pick the Bible up, but have no can't possess knowledge of it. It's just another novel to them, or another book to dissect and understand the history of. It. But when the Spirit of God touches it, it becomes a life source of strength. Just not against the powers of error, but you walk in the supernatural realm where the angels fear the Tron. Mm, wow, so good. <clears throat> well, uh, of course, the Bible, the Word of God, you know, it's meant to be us in Christ and it's right. an invitation of being in the Lord, of walking as Jesus walked on the earth, as he was, so are we. And uh, so right. it's an invitation. It's not an exception. It's an invitation. Um, and earlier, you're talking about tapping into the realms of the Spirit. Now, we're spiritual beings more than human beings, right. though That's on right. this finite lifetime here on earth, we're humans, but we're, we're really spiritual beings, right? We're spirit before we became man or human. What does it mean to tap into the spiritual realm? How do we tap into the realms of the spirit, Apostle? I, I tell people often this, you should live more in heaven and earth than the earth in heaven. You should be able to take everything that the heavens have to offer you as a Christian, as a child of God, especially as a prophetic voice. Bring heaven into the earth where people can see it demonstrate the power of the influence of God. And when they understand that, they can begin to uh, operate in that capacity that they know their divine purpose, first and foremost, bring heaven into the earth realm. We call this the soulish realm, but we bring the supernatural here because we are really more, uh, I tell the people every time, I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I can be what God says I am. Everything's going to be all right. These uh, bars of bones, I house my soul. I am what God says I am. And when you understand that, you're actually, you're taking on the thought pattern of heaven, but you're demonstrating an earthly realm where by people can see just not... Uh, the, the, the creation of God, but they see you, the finest creation, operating under the authority. And when you operate under that supernatural authority, you realize, even though I have this physical being, the physical shell, I'm more heavenly than I am earthly, even though we, we got to understand that, you know. Absolutely. And heaven is not just a place where we, we're going when we die, right. but because right. we've already died with Jesus, Heaven is our abode now. It lives and dwells right. in the Holy Ghost within us. And uh, it's so easy for us to tap into the realm of the Spirit because we're already seated with Him in heavenly places, and it comes by faith. But let me ask you this, Apostle, because uh, I know a little bit about your story. I know in your BC days, you know, you were uh, in the professional skateboard, skating industry in the world in that sense. But how and when did you begin to tap into the realms of the spirit? Talk to the people because it's tapping into the realms of the spirit is not just for the so-called super apostles, but anybody right. who's hungry for the Lord can tap into the realms of God. Absolutely. You know, when you tap into it, you're, you're really, you're, you're pulling. It's like, a, a, you know, you're tapping into all this, like even... Plugging up a lamp, you plug the coal in there, all that power, that moment surging through you, the circuit of God's spirit. Um, I had just got through, I was supposed to have been scheduled to do a contest there in California. So the guys were coming down to pick me up, and I just got some of my greatest sponsors. And uh, my mom, dad, you know, they believe in oil robbers. They, they follow A.I. and they follow oil robbers. And uh, so it was really, um, and then they went to a revival, and I said, no, at that time, you know, and I'm, I'm already getting to a place. I'm just starting now into success. And uh, I didn't go. And I was waiting uh, for the knock on doors for them to go ahead and just fly to California, get the contest demos, what we call the 
uh, before you do a contest, you have to do a demo, like a two minute run. And all of a sudden, the power of the Lord, I didn't see him, but I heard the voice of the Lord saying, I've called you to be a prophet. I'm putting two gifts on you. So I got saved. Uh, I wasn't even saved then. You know, I just, I just, I just heard it. Come on. Just like, you know, I was watching this. Uh, my father, it, it was Benny Hinn that my mom left the television on mm. when she went to revival. So it was Benny Hinn, he was wearing his white suit doing a major crusade. And I turned around and I heard Never, I mean, just so clear. It's like somebody was standing right behind me and said, I'll call you to be a prophet. And uh, two gifts I'm assigned to your life. And I turned around and said, who's that? And then was a knock on, like three seconds later, knock on the door, my sponsors come and said, we, uh, we're ready to take you to California. But the following, the rest of that sentence was, what do you want? Do you want to stay professional? Because I'm calling you to preach. And I just started weeping out of nowhere and said, I said, you know, I said, Lord, I'm here. I don't, I don't know, really know who you are. I don't really know what a prophet is. I don't even know what the two gifts that you're telling me about. And one was a gift of word of knowledge, and the other one was the work of uh, miracles and healings. Wow. And then uh, I found How myself going to... Apostle? Do what now? How old were you then when that took place? Uh, I just turned 19. 19. And from then to now, even more miracles, signs, and wonders ever since then. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, it's been, you know, such miracles that it, it's just impossible unless you, you just, you know that God, especially if you can uh, see the impossible, you can do, I mean, if you can see the impossible, you can do it, you know. It, you just got to see it through the supernatural first because uh, it takes more faith to speak it than it does to see it. So wow. when when those kind of miracles happen, so yeah, that's just a little bit of the background, how the words of knowledge begin to operate. Then I, I remember the first service I was in, I started seeing people's names, uh, their bodies like skeleton. I started seeing uh, diseases and I started feeling going through my, my body. Mm. And I, it, took, it took some time because I went everywhere trying to figure out who's, who's been operating in these gifts, you know. Who, wow. You know. So the Lord so. downloaded these gifts to you. You began to operate in them. And wow, you're going from glory to glory. Friends, listen, we're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, Apostle Tracy Allen Cook, he's going to begin to share more and how to operate in the gifts of God. Like God asked him, what do you want? the breaker 2.0 you know that one simple yes of obedience and to see like where all my family is now and all my siblings and all of us in the ministry and now let's think about one simple sin right if that one simple yes is so powerful what about that one simple sin or that one simple quote-unquote act of disobedience god is a god of generations and inheritance and blessing and we see that all throughout the bible and the bible is a complete love story that points us to jesus and even as a child of god we are heirs we have access to everything because of the cross and the blood so even more so it's like one act of obedience leads you to this place of freedom and inheritance and legacy and and, and blessing but one act of disobedience can also lead you down another way. And we see that because the enemy is always the counterfeit to everything that God is about. Wow, 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 people of God. What a powerful broadcast. Breakthrough in deliverance with Minister Natasha and this is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim with The Breaker 2.0. See you soon. Well, welcome back, my friends. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim here on The Breaker 2.0. And today we are breaking it down and how you can operate in the realm of the divine knowledge of God. Absolutely. God's divine knowledge. You can tap into his mind, his heart, and his spirit. And today, we have Apostle Tracy Allen Cook. Before the break, Apostle, you were talking about how you began to operate in the gifts that God has given you. And you were just a baby-born Christian. Maybe you didn't even give your life to the Lord. But how did you learn to operate in these gifts? the gift of word of knowledge, the gift of the healing, I believe, the miracles. How can people begin to operate in those gifts like you did? Go ahead, Apostle. Well, one of the things, you, uh, everything comes with 
uh, we're in perfect channels. The Holy Spirit and his gifts are perfect. So you have to learn a, a part of you. You have to begin to, you have to trust the Holy Spirit. You know, you're not going to be able to trust your own intellect, your own knowledge, but you have to trust him when he's ready to flow through you. You know, it, and I tell people all the time, they say, how, how do you see this? How do you say There's seven different ways God speaks to me. Several different ways. Um, one of them through the word of knowledge. And that knowledge is not obtained by uh, our resources or our study. It's supernatural downloads of the anointing that comes on our lives. That takes us, even though we're in this corner realm, we're actually, we're pinpointing it in the spiritual realm, in the supernatural. And it's like, you see me, but you don't see me. And when the, uh, I began to operate in those gifts, the Lord taught me the, the, the first time when the, when the gifts of word of knowledge began to operate, calling people names, so I'm like, oh, who's this person? Who's that? You know, uh, at first it was kind of scary, you know, I mean, you know, uh, I didn't see it happening. I didn't see it take place in the churches that I was coming up in. I saw, you know, like speaking in tongues and then interpret. Somebody would stand up and interpret. You saw that a lot of that, but you didn't see words of knowledge or miracles. Uh, not when I was coming up to the the, P, the PhD denomination, you know, Pentecostal or Assemblies of God or the Church of God, or what have you, or Church of Prophecy. But I remember the first time I just I heard the Lord say. It's your job to speak it. My job is to perform it. Mm, okay. And I never forgot that. And I just started calling it out. And I said, all right, I'm, I'm getting more tuned now. I'm more, more alert to it. My ear gates are open more. I'm just going to trust what I see and I'm going to speak. And the more you trust what he shows you, the deeper you go into those dimensions. And all of those dimensions, you cannot... Uh, I tell them in the school of the prophets, I'd rather for you to... Uh, mess up with me, then get out there and mess up. You know, I'd rather for you to learn the voice of the Lord, uh, learn the gifts, learn his flow, learn his functions, how he moves, what he desires for you to do at that particular time and season of your life. And a lot of times, I think it's just the short lines of unbelief that stops us from going deeper because uh, the first thing we do is, what if it's not God? Sure, yeah. What if, you know, that's elementary to, uh, to a lot of people. But those are the most powerful beginnings of operating in those gifts. It's learning to trust the Holy Spirit to flow through you. You have to give all your abilities, all your knowledge, all your wisdom over to him and trust him when he operates those words of knowledge or he shows you something about somebody's life. Uh, I mean, many times I look into somebody's eyes or I uh, won't know anything, but Time I open my mouth, everything comes out. Come on. And then there's times that I can see every single detail about that person's life, you know. Well, let me ask you, so, Apostle. It, for many people, it makes sense where God will give words of knowledge for healing, for miracles. But why names? Why addresses? Why these specific details? Why? And we understand, of course, there's a lot of false prophets, a lot of people. Right. You know, there's been controversy where people will go on Facebook or online and get the details beforehand and they'll prophesy, right? And we also yeah. know that there's uh, people operating in the occult and witchcraft where they're right. pooling these details from a demonic realm. But why is this important? Uh, talk to us, Apostle. Why is it important for the Lord to reveal <laughs> Sister Susie or Susan, you know, to you, to me, as we're ministering in a service to God's people? I think what it is, uh, Apostle, is it's like a pastor called me the other day from Arizona, and uh, I had forgot all about the word of knowledge, the address, and everything that God was telling him. He said, my wife and I uh, didn't even know that was the address and everything to what we're believing God for. And they said, uh, we wrote it down before that word of knowledge was given, that they were believing for this address, this property, and everything where the address was. So the Lord gave me the address and he said, you'll you're own this, you'll you're possess this. Well, they went back and said, you know, I couldn't understand the word of knowledge. And then they went back and checked the notebook, what they believe in God for. And it was the same thing that God said through the word of knowledge. Yes. God often, you know, I tell the people all the time, 
don't be mesmerized by uh, God gives you name. And right, I mean, honestly, it's the words of knowledge is just like the healing ministry. It's controversy in everything you do. Because unfortunately, there was a, a, a time a few years ago that prophets were seeking scientists and repeating word by word by word. You know, I'm sure you knew about it because I was supposed to be in a meeting, so I canceled the meeting. I said, I can't be in a meeting with that, wow. you know. Uh, because the, the thing about it is we have to be careful because the words that we speak, the words that we say, uh, people's lives are hung on the balance of it. And you should believe, you know, that's prophetic reversal. And that's another subject all by itself. When God speaks and he changes his mind, a lot of people don't understand that, you know. Come on. Uh, the, Isaiah, the Isaiah rule in the prophetic, the prophetic reversal. But God often calls name and address to answer the question. I think it just builds the faith of the individual, you know. I've seen it so many times. And uh, to me, I'd rather see something about their body or their lives that can help them mm. in order for them to, um, I mean, it, it got such a place for me in ministry that every time I did a service, people were just suspecting that, you know? Mm. So one service, uh, I didn't operate in that capacity of the word of knowledge and people, and one lady came in and said, uh, do you know my name? I said, it, it doesn't matter whether I know your name or not. It's rather not you get healed miracles, but that has happened so many times. And uh, you, I told her, I said, you know, no disrespect, but you should be more concerned about your miracle, your healing, calling out names. Jesus saw Nathaniel on the fig tree and called him out. He said, Nathaniel. He said, when do you know me, Lord? That was a word of knowledge. God called him out by his name. And then the prophets of old, even old New Testament, they would give the Pacific place, go here or go there. You know, we were talking about it last night that uh, why we don't present gifts anymore before we come to the prophetic. You know, you always want to honor uh, every single gift because whatever you value, you honor that. But it seems to be when I was coming up, that's all, that's all I knew what to do was to give honor, you know, no matter what. Well, you know, Prophet, I wrote a book, and thank you for your lovely endorsement. Uh, I wrote a book called Supernatural Power of Honor. And we yes, need to learn to honor Prophets, men and women of God. Yes, there's a lot of false. Yes, we're human. Uh, but we still need to learn to honor the office and the anointing mm -hmm. that's on the human being. And uh, the Bible says if you honor a prophet, you'll receive a prophet's reward. And Absolutely. Today, our generation, we have lost the art of honor, the understanding of honor. But I, I want to declare over you, my friends. Today, as you honor the prophet, Dr. Tracy Allen Cook and myself, you're going to receive a double portion in the breakthrough of divine knowledge in Jesus' name. Well, I must say, you know, uh, three years ago, I, I document uh, the three years and I document the last 2024 and 2025. It's going to be a time of a restoration for the body of Christ. They're going to come into the rest. When I talk about coming to the rest, they're going to come into such a... Uh, I knowing that all the warfare they've been encountering, uh, the demonic attacks are going to come to a place of the totality of God. And I mean, world events, everything that's taking place right now has already been documented almost 12 months ago. So there's nothing new under the sun that God's not going to do. He just, he's getting America ready. He's getting the world ready for the greatest move of the Holy Spirit, even though, uh, Everybody's kind of prophesying doom at this hour into 2024 because of what's taking place with Israel and the Middle East, Hamas, Hezbollah, and all that. Well, prophetically, if you look to the next realm and next level, Come on. then there is a period of restoration. You just can't look at, you know, we can't pinpoint, okay, because this is taking place and that's taking place. It doesn't define who God is. It doesn't define who you are in the prophetic. Or it's going to be a time of restoration for the body of Christ. They're going to come into a time of rest. There's going to be a divine shift of favor. Even though a lot of things that's going to take place uh, politically, uh, oh God, it's, it's, it's going to be a challenging time. It really is. But it's going to be a surprise, but it's not going to be. Mm. Because everything that God has said in the last several weeks in dreams and vision, it just, I mean, even yesterday, things I said two years ago that will take place 
now in 2024 had just came out yesterday. So mm. we, we want to be able to understand the importance of that's a time of prayer like never before. But it's not time to be fearful. It's not time to uh, give in to the errors of darkness, spirit of error. We're prophetic people. Come on. We create atmosphere that's conducive to miracles. And no matter what's taking place upon the land doesn't change the fact that God's going to be glorified in us, going to be glorified in our lives. Mm. The supernatural. The Lord spoke to me that would be an unprecedented year of miracles. And it would be the uh, greatest uh, tap into the rims of the glory. There'll be a change of money like we haven't seen in the last two years. Come on. So we're going to see that in 20. You know, I fully believe in these words. I mean, you're, you know, we're, we're, we're two peas in the same pot. We're drinking from the same spirit. Right now, Prophet, as we're bringing this to a close, for the next 15, 20 seconds, can you just release that impartation of divine knowledge for miracles? Because you are about to step into the best year of your life, my friend. So go ahead, Apostle. Let's just release that blessing over them, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, as your servant, humbly, Lord, I come before you and I ask God, I release a prophetic anointing where they walk into the gifts of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Walk in divine knowledge and possess heaven's wisdom, heaven's knowledge. Let them be demonstrators. Let them be transformers. Let them transform a nation, a community, their state. Lord, let them transform their families, their ministry. Let everything, let them be a transformer, world changer. I release a supernatural anointing and a hunger and a trust to the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit become the essence of who they need to be in you, God. Let them walk in full authority. I release miracles. I release healings. I come against the attacks of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Wow, wow, wow. Apostle Tracy. Thank you so much for just pouring out your heart today. It was incredible. Breakthrough in the divine knowledge of God. How can people find you, follow you, bless you in your ministry? Well, you can go to uh, CooksRevivals.org uh, or the Elijah Training Center Facebook, uh, Cooks Revivals. Or you go to YouTube, our website, everything's up. Download the app, get the materials, get new podcasters coming out, new digital downloads, uh, materials there 24 seven to help you grow the advance and the knowledge of wisdom, how to be used by God and find your identity, find your purpose. Go to cooksrevivals.org. Thank you so much, man of God, people of God. If you want to grow in the divine knowledge of Jesus, miracle signs and wonders, make sure you follow him. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim with The Breaker 2.0, where we're believing for breakthrough in every area of your life. God bless.